How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Bengals Steelers part two of the 2022 season. And I tell you what, I don't really care what the records say. Three and six, five and four. I really do consider this a game that will dictate whether, wait for it, either one of these two teams have a chance to make playoffs this season. Sounds a little far-fetched for the Steelers at three and six, but let's now, let's remember who's coaching this team. Let's remember about to remind you of the defense this Pittsburgh Steelers team has on the field night in and night out. And you look at their schedule, and you look and say, you really do go down this list and say they can beat Baltimore once or twice. They can really turn things around in the second half of the season. It might be a lot with this offense, but the defense can win these guys' games. Mike Tomlin has been the coach of the Steelers for as long as he has for a very good reason. That being said, there is no reason at all the Bengals walk into this game and should feel overly confident playing a Pittsburgh Steelers. A Pittsburgh Steelers team that sacked Joe Burrow seven times in their first matchup this season. A Pittsburgh Steelers defense that caused Joe Burrow to turn the football over five times in their first matchup. Four interceptions, one sack strip fumble there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All that being said, the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, we just talked about how poor it has played this season. The execution hasn't been there. All that being said, the Steelers managed to win this football game in overtime. To turn the football over five times in one game and still have a chance to win the game, <laughs> there's got to be some issues on the offensive side of the ball for the opposing team. I know it's not talked about a lot, but I really do think Najee Harris is still dealing with that Liz Franks. It was said at the beginning of the year. Like it was an injury that was going to linger and he was going to have to probably deal with the entire season. He's not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and make an excuse and complain and say that's the reason he's struggling or he's still dealing with it. But I would assume he's not playing at 100% right now. But maybe that's reflective of his play on the field. They did have a much better game on the ground last week coming off of their buy. And maybe they built on it against the Bengals this week. Then again, Bengals expecting a big return in DJ Reader this week. Somebody that's going to really help cog the middle of the field or middle of that defensive line. A elite run stopper in the nfl returning for the Bengals. that's a big addition pittsburgh's going to be down minka fitzpatrick after an epic app i can't even say it same injury same surgery joe burrow had with the appendix appendectomy i think that's it that might be right good for us uh so he's probably going to miss this game that's a big game changer off the field for the pittsburgh steals on defense if we remember properly Fitzpatrick and TJ Watt just wreaked havoc on Joe Burrow and his offense the entire game the first time these two teams played. TJ Watt, on the other hand, left that game injured. We've seen what happened when TJ Watt was off the field. This has been the story of the Bengals' offensive line for the last year and a half. They have a hard time dealing with game records on defense. And by game records, we're thinking Miles Garrett. We had Micah Parsons, TJ Watt. Guys that can just control a game on defense with their pass rushing abilities. TJ Watt is going to return this week. Uh, I played last week from that pectoral injury. And once again, I expect more issues and concerns for the Bengals. This is a really big game for them. And they can find a way to slow down TJ Watt and find a way to prove like, hey, we can game plan. We can scheme around stopping a game changer on the opposing team and protect our quarterback. That is a big deal for the Bengals. I really do think that's the only, that's the only thing it ain't even up for debate that has slowed the Bengals' offense down in the last year and a half. It was the playoffs. It was the Super Bowl. It's now. It's the offensive line and being able to control an elite pass rush. They're going to be without. Maybe we'll see what happens with Jamar Chase. I think there's a lot of optimism Jamar Chase would play this week. You ain't hearing a lot of news. Zach Taylor said there is no update. He's optimistic DJ Reader plays this week. But you're not hearing as much about Jamar Chase. We'll see. That is a game changer for the Bengals, of course, on offense. Uh, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd can make things work. Hayden, Hayden Hurst has been elite back there as far as I'm I, I, Okay, we won't throw that word out there. But he's been really effective as a tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I have loved watching this guy play. Joe Mixon had one of his best games of his career last week or uh, before the bye, I should say, there for the Cincinnati Bengals. A guy that's been struggling all season. Joe Mixon was struggling and struggling, again, offensive line struggling to uh, run block as well. But if there's a team Joe Mixon plays really well against historically, it has been the Pittsburgh Steelers. I would think he keeps on track here in the Bengals heavily run or rely on the run game once again this week to alleviate some pressure on Joe Burrow. And I think, again, you see a team well-rested off the bye week. You see Joe Mixon with a chance to 
build up some more momentum after that game. I think they see a run game that again flourishes for a second straight uh, game here for the Cincinnati Bengals. I think we're going to have some more offensive line problems. I do. I think this is one of those statement games, though. The Bengals have to win this football game to go 5-5 five and five and then run the gauntlet of a schedule they run the rest of the season. Uh, it's not very bright. It's not going to look very pretty, we should say. I think this is a game they have to go 6-4, and four, win this game, win, go 6-4. and four. I think the Bengals realize how important winning this game is. When the big games come around, they tend to find ways to win them. And you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Their offense has not scored more than 20 points in a regular four-quarter game all season. They have scored 23 points once. It was against the Bengals. It was in overtime. The Bengals gave them the football five times. It took five turnovers for the Pittsburgh Steelers offense to surpass the 20-point mark this season. I don't think the Bengals are going to do that again. I just don't. I can't imagine Joe Burrow having another game like that for a very long time, if ever in his career. And I think for that reason, the Bengals are going to find a way to win this football game. I would say the Bengals win this one. I don't think it's going to be a slugfest by any means. We're going to say Bengals 24, Steelers 17. Love you guys' thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.